Hello and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. Today I'm going to take you along with me shopping at the Goodwill bins and then I'm going to show you what I got and how I flipped it. Some of these I'm going to keep, some of these I'm going to sell. I'm also going to show you how we did a little switcheroo in my children's rooms upstairs. My two oldest love sharing a room together and we've had them in separate rooms since we moved here to Houston but they always end up sleeping in each other's rooms anyway. So we decided to move them together into one room and I'm going to show you how we did that and show the before and after of that as well so stay tuned to the end of the video for that but let's get going another day another shopping trip to the goodwill bins i'm really excited to go because of how good my haul was last time so i have hope that i'm going to get a good one again although the odds are pretty slim i'd have two amazing trips back to back like that because that was only two days ago but wish me luck. I hope I find some neat stuff. I hope there's no drama today. We'll find out. Busy. Look at all those people waiting outside. I got there pretty much when it opened. I only had to wait like maybe 30 seconds and then we all walked in. There was no crazy running today. Um, sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. But there was a lot more people there today than what I am used to. It seems like the word is getting out and more people are coming. And I'm seeing more people come that are less polite so that's kind of a bummer but overall this was a good trip the last time I went here was the time that all those people were like about to get into a fist fight with each other over people like pushing to get in front of each other it was ridiculous but this time they had a whole bunch of male employees there that were doing such a good job of crowd control and they busted out new bins like every couple minutes it was really hard to keep up so I didn't even get to film some of the shopping that I did because it was just going so fast I had to put the camera away and get going really quick but I got these two pans and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do these baking tins are in rough shape and kind of rusty but I think they'll look really neat if I find a way to stack them into a two-tiered tray of some kind I seen some stuff on Pinterest that really inspired me I'm gonna have to go back and try and find it but all I'm going to do is throw these in the dishwasher and then look around to see if I have something that I can create this tiered tray out of with them. This brass candle holder is really neat. I think it's in great condition other than the discoloration there, but I'll probably just clean this up. The best way that I know to clean stuff quick and easy is in the dishwasher. So you get a little sneak peek of some other stuff that I got from the bins. But this is me washing it all together in the beginning so that I can create awesome DIYs out of it later. These two baking tins are real heavy, thick, like old ones. You can tell those have seen some things. <laughs> and then this cute little candle holder are going to be a great two-tiered stand. I'm going to use my E6000 glue to attach them together. I really like the look of mixed metals when they're both worn or antique looking or just vintage. Um, when it's new, it doesn't look as good when you mix metals, but mixing worn awesome metal things together just make it look antique and curated and collected. I think this is going to be a really unique piece of decor for anyone to put in their home. It could go with so many different decor styles. It could be farmhouse, it could be antique, it could be lots of different things. But I think it turned out really great and I just let this cure for a couple days before I'm going to take it to my booth and sell it there. And if you want to see my booth stuff, I can update you in the next video with all these items in there. I just didn't have time to get this done and take it all to my booth in the same day.
I got this awesome magazine that is a bunch of flowers. Let me show you. Gives you all the patterns on how to make them. And I think this will sell in my booth or possibly online. Any of my small items, like these books and smaller, I am definitely willing to sell in my Etsy store. So if you would like one of these things, send me an email. And my email address is desertdiytime at gmail.com. And I'll get that up in my Etsy store for you. I haven't opened it yet, <laughs> my Etsy store, but I am working on it. I just have had one thing after the other happening lately. And now we're also all sick. You can't really tell. I'm hiding it well. <laughs> but I've got a terrible sore throat and tons of post-nasal drip. My son is sick and my middle daughter is also sick, so I'm sure it's only a matter of time before everyone else gets it. But here I've got some HGTV magazines. They're old ones, but they're summer, and I thought that would be great to get inspiration for the upcoming summer season. Here in the YouTube world, we always have to be one season ahead. This next one is amazing, and with all the crazy stuff going on in the news right now with the royal family. Um, I was amazed that I actually found this, but it's a Life magazine with Princess Diana on it. It was from 1982. I also have an Arnold Schwarzenegger one. Okay, who's next? A test tube baby boom. Wow, isn't that crazy how things change, huh? Okay. This one is from 1947 and it was 15 cents and it's a female water skier. This one is about India Pakistan clash, the day the air became unbreathable and the new China look with actress Sybil Shepherd in a coolie coat it says from 1971. These aren't in amazing condition, but they're still in decent condition. Another football team's uh, most violent men. Oh my goodness, from 1971. Look at how different the equipment was compared to now. And then this one was the Super Bowl scouting report, the pros rate the two teams, 1972. And this is the Dallas Cowboys, so <laughs> that's definitely old. I have this adorable French country metal um, planter and it's silver with a white background. It just needs to go through the dishwasher. You've already seen this go through the dishwasher. It didn't get out some of the permanent markings inside but that's okay because I plan to put things in there that won't show it and this is a piece that I'm actually going to keep. If you've been watching my channel for a while you know I'm more of a silver girl than a gold girl so this is definitely something I'm going to keep for myself. Some of the cool books that I found were this Reader's Digest, I believe. Yeah, Reader's Digest Condensed Books, Volume 1, 1975. I just love the cover of it. Isn't it beautiful? And at the Goodwill bins here, the books are all 50 cents a piece. So I got all of these for 50 cents a piece. Here is, it says, The Children Sing, and it's probably a bunch of hymns. Let me see. Yep. How cute. Let's see when this one was, was written or published. I think I see, it says 52 on it, so I think it's from 1952. I would guess that that's accurate, but cute book and I think that will sell well in my booth. This one, I looked this up, the value of it online, and I found one being sold for $1,200. Yes, $1,000. $200. I'll pop that up on the screen right now. Some websites are even asking $1,850 for it, $1,850 for it. So I think that I got a steal of a deal at 50 cents. I'll have to do a little more research about it, but there's something really special about this book. But if you look inside, here's my favorite part. It's a Gone with the Wind, and it is from 1936. And it has the person's address on here. I don't know why she wrote it twice, but it's from Rochester, New York. A little one got a hold of it and it says right here gift of the people of the United States through the victory book campaign to the armed forces and merchant marine special service branch 
How cool is that? Being a veteran myself, I think that is so neat. Victory Book Campaign, a book from Rochester, New York, Gone with the Wind. And it says right here, published in 1936. So amazing. But yes, these are very valuable. This is going to go up on my Etsy shop since I definitely won't get this price for it in my booth. I'm going to guess I'm going to charge around $50 for it plus shipping. The condition, like you see, is not perfect. That's why I'm not going to go anywhere near that $1,200 price. But it is actually similar in condition to that other one. And then here is another one of those Reader's Digests. For staging purposes, I think these books would look great together for the color scheme I'm doing and just the style of the items that I'm putting together today. And I think that it's a good representation of how I could stage these things in my booth as well or at home. If I wrote you a song, if I got every word perfectly weighted on a thin piece of paper, would it make any difference? This cedar chest was probably not purchased in a regular Goodwill because it has that lock on it. Little do you know, you just push on the lock and it opens. But I bet other people had no idea you can do that. And I took this one home with me for a future project. I also got this twine on a spool that I'm going to use for a project today. My next two items are this little piece of, of twine, this little roll of twine that's in a pretty brown color. When you're shopping at the Goodwill outlet stores or the Goodwill bins, always look for craft supplies. You will go in there not even thinking about craft supplies and come out with tons of them. The next thing I got is this little, I think it's a crochet hook set in brand new condition, has all the pieces, and this is gonna go up in my booth, opened up like this, staged with a price tag on it so that people know what it is. If I staged it like this, they would just think I'm selling a bag. So I wanna make sure I stage it like this. It even smells brand new, like new rubber or something. But yeah, really great condition. I love the dark purple that it is. And how awesome that I found this is brand new. If I was somebody who crocheted I would keep it but I'm terrible at crocheting. Also found another new in the package product. Now on to the clothes. So I got a pack brand new of these brown shirts. I thought they would be great for going to the gym. They're extra long so it'll cover my behind <laughs> and um, I also think it would work great for wearing to work on some of my projects when I'm doing some of the messier stuff. So I'll throw these in the wash and I also got this sweater, which I thought was awesome. It kind of reminded me of Full House, the colors, um, that TV show Full House. But it says 1990, one of the best years of our country's history. <laughs> and then here is a shirt I got from my son. It is um, the Children's Place brand. And it has cute little birds on it. I thought this would be cute to wear when we have a beach day down in Galveston or something like that. I got this like new picnic blanket. Let's see what the brand is. I didn't even look. C&C California. I don't know. I never heard of it. I'll look it up. But I found some of the same brand on Amazon for $19.95, but none with the lemons. But I did find this Kate Spade one for $39.95, so I think I got a really good dupe of a Kate Spade. Yeah, it's like brand spanking new, and it has lemons all over it, which I love, and it's pink, which I love. So this would be great for the beach. It has like a swishy, swishy texture to it. So I know it's not going to have any sand sticking to it, which is great. But I'll throw all these in the wash and it will be like brand new. <laughs> I just finished. They were moving really fast today, bringing out lots of new bins, but something weird happened when I checked out. She way overcharged me on stuff, saying that I had bought a bunch of clothes and I didn't. I guess the register was just acting up because I watched her ring everything up and she didn't do anything wrong. So it came out to be $106 and I was like, that seems like way too much. So I looked at the receipt and it had a whole bunch of stuff charging me $4 for everything, like over and over and over and over and over. And I was like, what are all these things? Because <laughs> they charge by the weight, so this made no sense. 
So they gave me a store credit for next time of $51.50 since I way overpaid. I was only supposed to spend $55 on my cart and I spent $106. So hopefully I don't have any problems when I come back next time and use my credit because that's a lot of money that I spent that I shouldn't have spent. So, race cars. But let me show you what I got. I have this awesome light it's all metal with glass marbles in it and then it has a light bulb seems like this was used outdoors but yeah I thought that was really neat and it would look awesome in my booth and bring lots of character when I was about 12 or 13 I wanted to get one of these lights so bad and I never got one and now I have one and I have nowhere to put it so it is going to go up for sale in my booth and I think it's going to look really neat staged just like this on top of some books or something else inside my booth to really draw attention to my cool stuff. This cute little frame is a easy DIY project all I have to do is pop in some really awesome artwork in here which I love to take out of botanical books and my little animal drawing books that I got from the bins as well. If this is your first video that you're watching from my channel, you'll have no idea what I'm talking about, but I'll show you later. And so many of you have purchased the books that I found on Amazon that were similar to the ones that I have. So I know lots of you are making those same crafts at home and I love it. That makes me so happy because they turn out really nice. But I'll pop in a pretty little floral print in here and throw it in my booth. The book that I'm going to be using to find my print to put inside here is called Garden Eden, I believe. And I have the that book linked in my Amazon store, but it may have already sold out. And also, I want to mention that prices on Amazon fluctuate a lot. So if I say the price is going to be one thing today, they may change the price by the end of the day today to something else. So I don't like to tell you the exact prices that it's selling for on Amazon just because they sell they change the prices so much and they sell things at way different prices from different retailers and everything. So if it is way over what you think you should spend on it, don't get it. And look on my folder for more of this, the same type of books because there's a lot of them that I put on there that are really, really affordable. So you don't have to get the exact same book that I'm using today if you're going to do projects like these at home. But just look at what fits in your budget and pick it out that way. Or if you want to, you can just keep looking for one at Goodwill and see if you can find a botanical print book of your own. Maybe at the Goodwill bins for 50 cents or maybe at a regular Goodwill store for maybe three or four dollars. I can tell you right now that these books will last you so many projects. I don't think I'll ever even finish using all the pictures that are in these books. But I wanted to pick one that was just the right size and something kind of simple because the frame is so um, like powerful looking. It's so um, drawing to the eye with that gold and those leaves on there, the pattern it has. I want the picture inside it to be more simple and a little more delicate just because I feel like that will help make the overall framed image look more expensive, high-end, or even kind of like something you would see in maybe an anthropology store and just make it look a little more expensive and more elegant. If I had done something more extravagant, it may have looked like just too gaudy. So something simple inside a really fancy frame is the right way to do it. I also staged it with this cute little bunny that I bought from Hobby Lobby and look at how gorgeous this turned out. I love putting these prints in frames. I think it's one of my favorite DIYs to do now and it's something that's so easy that you get the instant gratification of a before and after without any kind of hard work and you guys these have been selling like hotcakes. I have a bunch of these wooden crates. Let's start with the first one. This one is actually a sewing machine drawer. I can recognize that from anywhere. But somebody put a hanger on the back to hang this on the wall, which I think is really unique. But it has seen better days. Um, the handle needs to be tightened down because it's really loose right now. And I think I'm actually going to paint this since it does have some glue on here and there's a nail that I need to get out. But I think this would still look really awesome hung up in my booth on the wall. Maybe put like a little 
something something inside their candle or like a little vase or something oh and then i have a second one of those drawers i thought i didn't buy the second one so yay i forgot <laughs> what a happy accident here but yeah i'll probably paint these in similar tones but like one shade darker than the other or just complementary colors or something like that and hang them staggered i think that'd be cool the first thing that needs to happen though is these need to be really cleaned and disinfected. I got all the nails out and then I'm going to use my vacuum to vacuum out all of the dust first before I disinfect it. I love cleaning the dirty, dirty stuff with Lysol wipes because then you can keep throwing away these wipes as they get really nasty instead of just wiping it with the same dirty rag and cleaning it with a rag. I just feel like it gets it cleaner that way and um, I can just throw it out instead of having really gross stuff on my rags that are going to go through my washing machine. I don't know. <laughs> it's just the, the thought process that my brain goes through. But once that was all clean, I went over both of them with some butcher block oil instead of wax. I thought that this would work really well and be a much easier application. And it soaked up that wax, or sorry, that oil <laughs> in no time at all. So it was desperately needing some hydration and it made the piece look nice overall. When I saw this brown twine, it made me change my mind about painting these drawers because it was pretty much the exact same brown color as the drawers. So then I got to thinking, what if I wrap this twine around the bottom like third of the drawer and created a pocket of sorts and put a floral arrangement inside there? I have done similar stuff for my booth and it sold really fast. So I think that this is a great way to um, kind of upcycle some pieces of furniture or just random like it's kind of like a trash to treasure in a way you're just upcycling something into a whole new purpose and it looks really neat and unique things tend to sell really well and they also make your house look really cool when you have really unique things people will look at it and say wow I never thought to do that or it can also be a great way for you to save money and use what you have and be less wasteful because we all know that society is very wasteful now People just throw things away constantly and go buy new plastic everything. So if you can reuse an antique over a hundred year old drawer that came from a sewing machine that may be obsolete, broken, gone, thrown away, whatever, and make it into some beautiful decor with pennies on the dollar, that's phenomenal. And these daisies I got in an estate sale auction online it was part of this like big haul of random stuff like a mystery haul of things and so they were dirt cheap too so I put those daisies in there and tied them with the twine and now I'm just staging it with all the rest of my items I think it looks beautiful and not only would this be great spring decorations but it would also work great year-round or for summer I just think that it's timeless and classic Okay, the next one, it says Fairmont's Full Cream Brick Chest Pasteurized. So I'm guessing this was for cheese. Yep. Fairmont's Better Cheese. Let's see. Established 1884. Hmm. Doesn't say. Oh, here we go. Fairmont Creamery. I'm going to have to look up where that's from. It has some damage right here where it's missing a piece of the wood but it's got such a great patina on it it's actually really shiny so they must have sealed it with some good stuff oh look at all that dust coming out of it but it has this liner in it but this just needs a good cleanup and a re-wax and it can be sold as is i think it is so cool look at all that this was from making cheese the last crate is this one. It says Waverly Sam Brothers um, from something in New York. This is hand painted. This is all hand painted on here and it's a piece of corn or corn on the cob here. How beautiful that somebody hand painted that. You can tell by the texture. But this again just needs to be cleaned up. It's got like a bunch of cat hair in it. I'm not shocked. <laughs> But after we clean it up, I'll probably wax that as well. And then that will be all done for this one.
I got this baker's lamp and it's in good shape. The green is still absolutely stunningly beautiful. The brass is in decent condition. Still has the cover on the bottom. Needs to just be a little, a little bit like re-adhered on there. And put a light bulb in it. I hope it works. <laughs> I don't know if it works yet. But two lamps in today's haul. That's pretty great. But these sell really well. I usually price them at about $19.95. If I've never told you before, let me just say, I hate taking stickers off of stuff. It is so annoying. It's one of those things where I just hate the feeling of the stickiness and I don't want any part of doing this. But it was worth it here. I used Dawn Power Wash first to clean the whole thing and then I used that same Butcher Block oil to get that sticker off of there. It was actually really, really on there. And when you have something that's that stuck on there and doesn't want to come off, use something that is oil. You could use olive oil, you could use canola oil, any kind of oil and it'll help you get it off. Then I'm going to clean it with some Windex to get that oil off and get that beautiful shine on the glass. I tightened down all of the screw-on parts here so that it's nice and sturdy. And then I'm going to stage it with the rest of the items that I'm doing today. I was running out of room. I've done a lot of stuff today and got a lot of really cool things to show you. So I think this was a really good haul overall. And the lamp works, you guys. <laughs> Thank goodness, if you saw that lamp that I literally broke in the middle of filming, then you know why I'm relieved that this one works. But let's move on to the next one. This large piece of faux greenery is probably from a craft store, maybe even Amazon, but I grabbed it out of the bins because I can use it to stage in my booth like this in some of these wooden boxes or have it hanging off a shelf, or I could even decorate in my own home with it and this will go through the dishwasher as well just to make sure it's nice and clean. Greenery like this in this size could be anywhere from $10 to $15 from a craft store so I know that I got over way less than that and it drapes perfectly over this container so I'm going to keep them together and actually stage them in my own house. I got some bookshelves for my living room so I think I'm going to put these on there and I can show you that. Let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see. But here everything is all together. I love how everything goes well together. Whenever I do my flipping videos I try to create a vignette that has similar colors that all go really well together so that way I can stage them for you and give you ideas of how you can stage and use your thrifted finds or to uh, redo and upcycle things you already have in your house like these drawers from a sewing machine and I can't believe I found one of these lights I've been wanting one my whole life and now <laughs> that I have one I don't have anywhere to put it but the cool books I got look wonderful, have the same kind of colors as the marbles in the light. And then this two-tiered tray I think looks really unique and I think it's going to sell well in my booth along with that awesome framed print. Everything else I am just so excited about how it turned out. And don't forget we are going to be doing that room switcheroo <laughs> at the end of the video. So the video is not over right now. I'm just giving you a really good look at everything. And I will show you in a future video um, if you're interested. Let me know if you're interested in this. But I can show you in a future video how it actually looked in my booth. Once I put it in my booth, I'm going to probably be going over there today depending on how I feel right now. I feel pretty cruddy. <laughs> I am definitely more sick today than I was yesterday. You can probably tell by my voice in the voiceover. But hopefully I can find the energy in me to take some of the stuff over there and get it all set up for you. But now we are going to move on to the room makeovers, I guess you could say, where I'm moving my two daughters into one bedroom that they will share together. So this is my middle daughter's room. And you can see that it's not perfectly staged because we were about to move everything into a totally different room. And this is real life. I think that it's hard to find unstaged stuff on social media and like real life stuff um, because everything is always perfect. And my stuff in my house is definitely not perfect. We do our best, but it's not perfect. This is my oldest daughter's room, and she's really into anime. Both of them are really into anime. But she likes the more dark, moody colors, and she likes really artistic things, and she loves drawing and painting. And then my middle daughter likes more of the girly, 
aspects of the anime stuff. She likes the light and bright colors and the little stuffed animals and things. So they're they are opposites, but they are best friends. They act like they're twins, even though they aren't. But now it's time to get her bed set up. We got her a new mattress, and this mattress is from Ego Home. The mattress she was using was horrible. I laid on it once when I was saying goodnight to her, and I felt like I was a terrible mother because that bed was so uncomfortable. We got it from Walmart, and it was the worst. But this mattress from Ego Home is a 14-inch thick mattress. You would not guess that considering it comes in a box. This is the exact one that I got, and it is super affordable. The price that you get this for, you could not get a mattress of this quality in a big box store or even at Walmart. Like, you'd probably spend that much on a Costco mattress, and it would not be anywhere near as good as this one. Ego Homes mattresses use a different type of technology that they call Aerofusion, but pretty much what that means is it disperses the force across the surface. So that way, if you have any like back pain, discomfort from your body pressing on your mattress, it, it um, kind of relieves that tension that you would feel on your body touching the mattress. It also promotes blood circulation, which I think is really great. And overall, it just enhances your sleep quality. And when I checked out this mattress, I had to, of course, test it out in fun ways. And my kids and I had an absolute blast jumping on it and seeing exactly how much it would disperse our energy that we put onto it. We also got four new pillows for the girls, and these are memory foam pillows, just like the bed is memory foam, but they're not your standard, like, bar of soap shaped memory foam pillow where it's just like a big old block that doesn't flex or move and it weighs a million pounds. These are um, shredded memory foam, so it actually changes shape to fit you. It's more comfortable than those old style memory foam pillows, and they expand so much. You have to take them out of the package and let them sit for a day so that they can expand, but they expanded so much I was blown away. I'll show you later when I put the pillowcases on, but something that I do as a mom is I always put a total like everything proof mattress cover on my mattresses, and I like the ones that zip all the way around it so it keeps the dust mites out everything it just keeps everything clean in case they spill their water in the middle of the night on there or whatever it may be kids do the darndest things right so I always protect my mattresses that way now it's time to make the bed and give it that princess look that she wants she loves soft fuzzy things so we got this fuzzy blanket for her I think we got it on Black Friday a long time ago but now it's time to put these pillowcases on. You see what I mean? This is a regular pillowcase, a standard pillowcase, and it filled out the whole pillowcase. It looks like hotel quality, those massive, overfilled, amazing luxury pillows. And one of my biggest pet peeves is putting a pillowcase on the pillow and then there's like half the pillowcase is to just empty. It just hang in there <laughs> after you put the pillow in. That drives me nuts. I hate having that extra saggy pillowcase on there. And it seems like every regular store-bought pillow that I get, they always do that. They always say, oh, it's a standard pillowcase or a king pillow or whatever it may be. And the pillowcase is always way bigger than the pillow. I don't know why that is. It's like the, the whole joke about when you buy... Um, potato chips and the bag is like 90% air. I feel like pillows are like that now, but these filled up my pillowcases extremely well and they look amazing. My husband is putting up a little organizing like macrame thing <laughs> to hang. What would you even call something like this? Just this corner like toy hammock, I guess. We got it on Amazon. I'll link it in my Amazon store um, if you're interested in it, but He's just hanging this up and we're going to put all her stuffed animals in there. Since there is two girls in one room, we had to kind of do some organizational things as a part of this room makeover. So he did this and installed it on here. And then he's also going to be making and installing some shelves because my girls have a lot of like little collectible things. Um, since they love all their anime stuff and superhero things or what, whatever it is that they love to collect. They have some um, pretty big collections of things they've gotten just from Christmas and birthdays or whatever it may be. Or they bought with their allowance money. So we had to make sure they can fit all their stuff without it taking up too much of their bedroom space. I, I don't like having a cluttered space. And I think that for kids especially, you should not have their room all cluttered because then it's really hard for them to keep it clean. And it's just kind of stressful. Um, a more empty or more organized space is much better for kids when it comes to um, their their mental load, their stress load. <laughs> so we try to keep it as simple as possible for our kids. That's easier for them to maintain and it gives them a sense of peace in their room. So now he's going to stain these pieces of wood with a brown mahogany color. 
I wish it was a little bit uh, less red of a brown than it turned out to be, but it's okay. My girls love medium tone woods and they were totally happy with how this turned out. The room isn't completely finished. I still need to hang up this little bulletin board here on the wall. And then we also need to take this shelf over here and hang it up. Um, I want to create a shelf in the middle over here to where it has three shelves so that they have some room to grow and put their artwork up as they create it. They both love making art, especially my oldest daughter. She's constantly making new art and wants to put it up. But Piper approves. She said she thinks it's great. And I think the kids are really enjoying sharing a room together. My oldest even put together some floral arrangements. You know she loves doing floral arrangements. And then my second oldest, she is really enjoying having her princess bed. And her bed mattress is so much better than my oldest daughter's mattress so I think we're gonna end up having to get a second one <laughs> so that they can have wonderful mattresses together but hers is even much higher than my oldest so it, it looks a little bit funny in the room having one bed be much taller than the other but that just kind of goes to show you that it's a better quality mattress the one that my oldest has is just the cheapest one we could afford when we first moved in but look at how cute this little stuffed animal hammock is in the corner I think it's perfect it's Keeps her bed nice and clean and organized and she knows that her stuffies are safe and by her side when she sleeps. And they have lots of room to put cool new stuff in their room. There is a bee attacking me this whole time. And I think it's because of my pants have flowers on them. <laughs> Getting attacked by bugs. The birds are really talkative today. Hello, bird. <laughs> you hear them? Now people don't even know how to make cheese. Okay. I can't, did I say worlds? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit subscribe down below and we'll see you next time. Bye!